this is how you get huge cities in Transport Fever 2 and the most efficient ways to fuel their growth. This video will massively level up your skill level at this game so make sure to watch to the end as we're covering all areas of growth. Let's begin. So you're making a new game or you're loading a game, it works the same thing. Go to advanced game settings and then we're going to look up sandbox mode. Turn this on, it's really really useful. Technically you don't need it for this but I really really recommend it. I also really recommend this mod, natural town growth. This means that your cities can grow beyond the limit set by the game. Really, really good. Turn that on. This is also in the description. So let's start off with the capital city. Here's one that I made earlier. Now you'll notice that this is somewhere near the middle of the map. We can go all the way over here to the end of the map. I mean, go all the way over here to the end of the map, but it's about right, it's in the middle. That's what you want. Massive bonus as well if it's a cool looking city. We've got this nice hill in the background. It's quite reminiscent of Hollywood. So that's a bonus. It looks really nice. So in Transport Fever 2, there's three types of zone. You've got residential, commercial, and industrial. Here are some examples of those. So within these zones, you want all of these zone specific buildings to be together. You don't want something like this where all the zones are all over the place random. For this reason, picture it like a bonsai tree. You need to trim the buildings where appropriate to make sure that all of these zones stay together as one zone and don't get mixed up. I'll show you how that works. All of these industrial buildings in the center of the city are gonna go. Now that's looking a little bit better. It's obviously not perfect, but we can see the industrial zone is now separated clearly from the rest of the city. Whereas obviously we've still got a few commercial and residential mixing together, but we can fix that at a later date. This is just an example. Make sure you don't miss any of these buildings, by the way, because the reason we do this is because buildings in Transport Fever 2 will spawn next to buildings of the same type. So if you deleted, for example, every single industrial building in this city, aside from this little building here, then the entire industrial zone will be repopulated in this area as they expand next to each other. And you can see that this is what I did in Capital. Ideally, you want the train station to cover the main residential area and the main commercial area, but leave the industrial area out. There's not a lot of point because you might as well spread it out. You've got a lot of land. And the reason that we do this ties into later in the video. I'll explain. So stick around. Let's put that aside just for one moment and talk about how do we actually grow a city in the first place? Well, to start, let's grab another city. Let's create a new city just over the hill here and I can show you what I mean. Here's our brand new city just placed. Go up to here and press this button to open the zoning. Your city is going to look like this. It'll be a bit of a mess to start with, but that's okay. We'll fix it later on. Get some bus stops and we're going to place a bus stop in each of the zones with two Two routes going each way. I'll show you what I mean. Two bus stops down in commercial, two bus stops down in residential, and two bus stops down in industrial. It doesn't really matter on the placement, we're just getting some stimulation going. A new line going through these, and another new line going the other way. It should look like this. Grab a road depot, stick her in, grab some vehicles. So for the capital, add three buses to each of these lines. So the six in total for the capital city. Then the top 50% of the rest of the cities in size, do two buses on each line, so four total, and on the lower 50%, one bus on each line, two total. You're probably going to lose money on this, but it doesn't really matter as that isn't really the goal of Transport Fever 2. It's going to stimulate growth, which we can make money on later. This is literally just laying the groundwork as people can now get to work and spend their money shopping. It's just starting the process. There's not really a whole lot of point doing passenger connections to other cities just yet, but you can do a couple of lines to one or two cities surrounding the capital if you like. If you do trains, we're probably going to dig this up down the line to make space for the most efficient method, which is covered later in this video. So you could use a couple of road vehicles if you want wanted to, to fill this role. Groundwork laid, now we have to prime the cannon of population growth with cargo. So you're going to construct some yards. If you're on a long map, you want three. If you're on a square map, you want five. Do not make the mistake of placing these inside cities. It's an easy mistake to make. A lot of YouTubers do it too. You ideally want them about one to five kilometers outside the city. This is especially true for the capital. This is the best way of doing it because the yards on the outside collect all of the resources in the extremities of the map. And then a train with every type of train car goes between all of these yards and the distribution yard we're gonna make in the capital, then everything is processed in this spot and can be shipped out elsewhere. This is OP as all cargo is automatically shared where it needs to go and also the exact correct amount is picked up, no more, no less. Trucks will then pick up the cargo from the distribution hub and send it to various drop-off points around the city. Do not use truck stations, use drop-off points, as we aren't loading any cargo at the drop-off and it wastes real estate where we could have buildings that are going to produce more buildings and grow the city. Doing this setup means that all cargo demands will be satisfied and the capital will be prioritised for cargo supply, making the city grow faster than every other city then in order of delivery for the other cities you set up. Now that's completely primed for the explosion of population, 
All you need to do is provide more workers and tourists to your capital, which we'll explain now. So there's three types of passenger trains in Transport Fever 2. You've got commuter trains, intercity trains and cross-country trains. Sometimes these are also called local, city link or bullet, but let's keep it as simple as possible and call them commuter, intercity and cross-country. I bet you're wondering what to do with that information, so let me explain. Starting at the capital, we're going to make a station. If you want the best design possible in the game for a capital city station, then follow the instructions here but come back after as we still need to work out our services. Now this station is going to connect the rest of the world to this city. The first track to lay out will be our cross country track. Now this track is only going to have station stop at three cities if it's a long map or five cities if it's a square map. One of those is going to be the capital city and then the rest of them are going to be the cities on the border, the furthest away from the capital. So make sure that the cities on the extremities are also the best they can be when it comes to buses so we can get the most passengers on board those trains going to the capital. Next, surprising is not intercity, it's commuter trains. Now this can be a process. Connect a track that stops at every single city across the map and do not reuse cross-country track for commuter services. Make it have its own track, otherwise they're going to slow down the fast trains. Now also make sure your commuter routes actually terminate in capital. This is going to lead to more spending as when people transfer, they might spend some money in the city while they're here. And finally, we're on to intercity. With this, you only stop at the major cities down the line. For example, here, this intercity train stops halfway between the capital and the city on the border. A good rule of thumb is for every three stops on the commuter trains, the intercity train stops once plus the capital and the cities on the border. Bear in mind you can also reuse cargo tracks in some places, which is what I do, as it's more realistic, but just be careful not to overload the line, although you'd be surprised how many trains they can actually handle, so give it a go. Tracks are done, trains. Commuter trains will make lots of profit, but this is not money to spend, as we'll find out in a minute. For commuter, use a train with good acceleration at a lower cost and lower top speed. This is probably going to come with low capacity issues, which is actually a good thing because frequency on your line is much more important than capacity. The RA2 is a good example. If your trains on your commuter lines are high capacity, you're probably doing it wrong. If you need a guide to show you all the trains compared against each other, feel free to use this video in another tab as a guide where I lined them all up. Cross country trains need to have amazing top speed, decent acceleration and high capacity. You're going to lose a lot of money running these things likely, but the commuter trains are paying for it and they're really important to have as if you think about it, who takes luxury high speed transport? People with money. These people are going to your capital and are going to spend money and make it grow and that's why the loss is good as you're gaining elsewhere. An example of this is the ICE, intercity trains, are an interesting one as they're a medium ground between cross country and commuter. For this reason, they reuse both commuter and cross country tracks and can also use cargo tracks if needs be. Also add overtaking lanes placed strategically every now and then. So the cross country trains on their tracks can overtake the intercity trains and the intercity trains on the commuter tracks can overtake the commuter trains. A good train for this is the Lastoshka. All of the recommended trains are what I personally use. And by the way, obviously these trains aren't always available, but have a look at the stats in the depot and you can see across all areas of the game this applies. And now you've got your cities primed to grow and the people coming into them have set the explosion off of population growth. Update your local connections to cover all areas of the cities with buses and as the city expands place new drop-off points for the cargo deliveries. But now that's perfectly set up for growth you need to worry about traffic from this burst of population and that's why you need to watch this video which shows you the perfect methods for managing traffic in Transport Fever 2. 